Uh, so again, I'm Mark Fernandez with SGI, here to talk about the zero copy architecture. Um, here's my agenda today. Our marketing folks kind of mandate that I go over a few things first, so I'll cover those quickly and get down to what uh, is really interesting and really important today. So the SGI business overview, very quickly, we've been around for about 30 years. Uh, we're still around, we're still doing great. We've got about 600 plus patents out there. We've got 1,100 employees scattered across the world supporting systems in about 50 com countries. Uh, the slide says that we are a leader in high performance computing and I really like that bullet. Um, we believe high performance computing as Brian just alluded to, is the turnaround time for whatever you're doing. It's not necessarily the biggest, largest scale system out there. So for example, this little old company called PayPal has a 78 node SGI cluster, and it is the most important cluster in the company. It, it, it runs things that are critically important to their success, and we treat that 78 node cluster at PayPal with just as much importance as we treat our largest government customers and others. Okay. The second one uh, originally said from our marketing folks that we were a leader in high performance data analytics. I changed that to Pioneer and I thought it was great again that Brian alluded to the, the fact that Hadoop is different than GPU computing, et cetera, and they're all sort of under that umbrella of high performance data analytics. We at SGI have a family of solutions to address your HPC and HPDA needs and we have two of the leading boxes in, in high performance data analytics. One that does Hadoop and one that does in-memory databases and the zero copy architecture and those are apples and oranges from a hardware, software stack, etc. So there really is no leader in HPDA. There are segments of which there are leaders and we're two of those. Okay? Uh, our current business presence is that we now have 13 petascale systems out there. You can see some of those logos. Uh, the one SGI is extremely proud of is the one on the far left, Total. Total is an oil and gas exploration company. And it is the largest system on the top 500 not purchased with government funds. So it's an independent commercial. We've got to go make money. How do we make money? Again, that turnaround time. Okay. Uh, our shared memory systems are what we're primarily known for, the ultraviolet, and we were the first to ship a, an SGI FI card in that. It's not that known very well that we do a lot of storage. We have a very strong, mature, hierarchical storage management system called DMF. It's been around for many, many years. It's rock solid and stable. And we got publicly we can tell you we've got about 600 petabytes under management and they range from scientific data at the square kilometer array to high definition videos at the NBA. So at the NBA they have cameras around each of the games and they have humans talking into a mic saying Michael Jordan at the free throw line wearing this color uniform at this game etc and in manually ingesting the metadata that goes into the video back into the DMF archive. So a, a, a wide range of uses there for storage. Again, that high performance computing aspect time to solution. And we can publicly tell you that we've got about 10,000 nodes across five solutions. If you take out those companies that do Hadoop for themselves, the Yahoo's and the Google's, etc., uh, SGI is the world's largest supplier of Hadoop solutions. So what are our commitments? Very simply, in terms of Coming from the nerd at SGI, we're committed to three things. We're committed to the x86 architecture. We've done that, been that way since we divested ourselves of MIPS in 1998. And we have x86 roadmaps including Xeon, Xeon Phi, etc. going out to 2020 and beyond. We're committed to the open source software. The largest system on the top 500 running shrink wrapped operating system is an SGI. The greenest system on the green 500 is running an SGI with the open source, open source shrink wrapped operating system. So uh, we're an active participant in that community, for example, contributing back to it. Way back in 1993, we noticed that the file system was not doing what we needed in high performance computing and we created the XFS file system. And as in many cases, high performance computing leads the rest of the market. And you can see that in 2014, XFS, that file system, is now the default in Red Hat. And we remain a US-based corporation, uh, headquarters here in the Valley, and we have an SGI federal wholly owned subsidiary to handle our uh, US government work. Our HPC solutions, very quickly, this is our family. 
It's my family portrait. And just like my real family portrait, I've got children that are very, very different, but I love them all equally. So I, in terms of your HPC work and your turnaround time and your time to solution and your time to science, there may be a different family member to help you out. Very quickly on the far left is the SGI Rackable. It is a pure commodity play. And we get asked oftentimes, why do you have a pure commodity play in your SGI product line? There's several answers to that. The first of which is, we need login nodes and admin nodes and metadata nodes, etc. And, and rather than spinning up um, a whole product line just to do that, we take the commodity boxes. With two exceptions. One is we've got a HPC two socket x86 node optimized for large scale deployments of which is used in one of those exascale systems that you saw of our 13. Plain Jane box. We bring the large scale best practices of SGI down to the commodity box and we're able to do that. Another one is, is almost identical to what Brian was talking about. Uh, it's a single box that can house up to eight physical GPU cards and they're shared across PCI switches for those that want to learn about GPU computing and then scale GPU computing by adding GPUs to the same box. Uh, we have the SGI ICE which is an integrated cluster environment optimized for density, power and cooling. And uh, thirdly is the ultraviolet and I sort of mentioned the one on the far right optimized for Hadoop. Uh, all of this runs the shrink wrapped operating systems and they all run the same SGI management system across our entire family. Okay. Today we're going to spend some time talking about the SGI ultraviolet and the zero copy architecture. The SGI ultraviolet 3000 and its baby brother the UV300 are the basis. Um, one of those product managers could have hundreds of slides and spend hours talking to you about it. I think you need to know two things about this box. Uh, first is highlighting green up to 256 sockets. There's not a shrink wrap operating system that can address more than 256 sockets. The second one is 64 terabytes of memory. That is the most memory that the Intel processor can address and that will not change until 2019-2020. So the bottom line is this is the biggest, baddest box you can build. Okay? There's, you can't do it any bigger. All right? So, and to be honest, most of the people in the world that need the biggest, baddest box have already got one. All right? So what do we do? It reminded me of the uh, years ago when the Hummer came out, the big four-wheel drive Jeep looking thing. Uh, and after a couple of years of it being on the market, there was a commercial which everyone's sitting around a uh, conference room and the engineer was saying, what can we do to make the Hummer better? There was a moment of silence and a, a young engineer raised his hand and said we could make it smaller. And you got the H2. So we've done something similar spanning between the UV30 and the UV3000 introducing the UV300 it is a 5U building block chassis. And in that 5U, you can put up to 3 terabytes of memory, and you can see the four optimal memory configurations available from a half a terabyte to 3 terabytes. But we also have included some bulkhead options. A low cost, no PCI option number 3, to a high I.O. option number 2 there with 12 PCI, and then something in the middle. But we also introduced NumaLink 7. NumaLink is the SGI secret sauce that gives you that global addressable memory and makes these multiple physical nodes look like one system. We advocate scaling, as you see here, from 4 sockets to 8 sockets to 16 sockets to 32. And there's, an NVIDIA, uh, uh, there's a YouTube video showing how a service person does that. And each of those increments takes 15 to 20 minutes. And then upon power up, you now have a system that's twice as large as it was before. No changes in software, no switches, no infinite band cables, etc. You, in, you introduce your new electricity and uh, the new NumaLink cables. <clears throat> now, with the NumaLink 7, we're able to interconnect all 32 of those sockets in a non-blocking interconnect. The nerds like myself would call that a full bisection bandwidth fat tree or um, describe it as a maximum hop of one. In the enterprise space, they call it all to all. 
Every node, every socket, every process sees everybody else equidistant. Okay? Everybody is one hop away. Amazing flat latency curve. Amazing flat performance curves when you do something like this in one rack, air cooled. Okay? So, what can we do with this? Well, we've got all those PCI slots. We support the Phi, the Teslas, and the Quadros. Uh, more on that later. We also have begun to look at the NVMe PCI cards for a couple of reasons. One, you see the capacity at two terabytes today. It'll go to four terabytes later this year, six terabytes next year, eight terabytes. And the same form factor with the same power consumption. Four watts idle, 16 watts typical. So that means I can stuff this rack with SSDs and still remain air-cooled. So what can we do with this? We handed these to our engineers. They were able to place eight of them in one of those chassis, a UV30 chassis. And I put eight of those chassis in a rack. And I wanted to see the scalability of just taking these solid-state disks and putting a file system on them. What file system did I use? The stock's FSS, this part of the operating system. So this is taking the cards out of the box, running a shrink rack OS, putting on a uh, file system, and seeing what kind of performance can I get with stock uh, benchmarks. Uh, briefly, this is the unoptimized right out of the box. You can see the blue line. I'm getting between 25 and 30 million IOPS. And you can see that I'm getting 180-ish gigabytes a second. With some optimization, we got up to 30 million IOPS and 200 gigabytes a second at the same time on the same file system. We often build a file system for IOPS or we build it for bandwidth, but it's difficult to build one for both. This is in one rack, air-cooled. And I, I, just yesterday I saw a presentation from a storage vendor. Their next generation controller is going to get up to 900,000 IOPS. So, round it up to a million, you're going to need about 30 million, 30 arrays to get that IOP number. Okay? If we're running about 200 gigabytes a second. Our own systems run about 6 gigabytes a second for controllers, so I'm going to need about 30 of those. So I'll need that, that amount of rack space, disk to go behind them, etc. <clears throat> that introduces us very quickly to the concept of a zero copy architecture. If we're honest with ourselves, traditionally what we do today is we compute, we store something out to fast scratch, and then the next guy does his analysis. That's what we say, right? There's actually a copy going on in there. You've got to write it out there, and then you have to get a copy back in to do the analysis. Okay? With a zero copy architecture, we're going to store it locally in the simplest of terms. <clears throat> so. This is applicable to a workflow environment, and I have a cartoonish eight-step workflow meant to align with the eight chassis that you see in this one rack, eight UV 300 chassis. You always begin with some kind of data acquisition, whether that's a radar downlink or an Illumina sequencer connection, etc. There's generally a QAQC process. And then before people model with it, they do some pre-processing. The processing takes place next. Each of these steps could be optimized at a hardware level within that chassis. Your processing may use FI cards. It may use GPU cards. It may use a lot of CPUs. It can all be in the same box. Oh, you've got a database you need to search. Well, I get 128 terabytes today in solid-state disk on an XFS file system in this one rack. So if your database is smaller than 128 terabytes, instead of it being out on spinning disk, it can be inside the system. Okay? And there'll be some post-processing. I always want to save my science. So that may be going out an InfiniBand card, which is fully supported. It may be going out a 10 gig Ethernet to Panassas, which is fully supported. And oh, you might want to show your science to your boss or your sponsor or something. We support this servers with the GPU cards, all in the same air-cooled box. Of importance of late is a sequencing workflow, genomic sequencing workflow. So Illumina may have a recommended way in which you get the data off of the sequencer, and that card will fit in this box. 
Then you may do some QC. For example, I'm not a bioinformatics person, but uh, our, our vertical lead there says there's something called Q score, which you would do for the quality control. And then you do QA and trim. You do the alignment, the assembly, the analysis. Oh, it needs to search a database. The 1,000 genome project recently computed, completed. And that 1,000 genome project, the entire data set is about 100 terabytes. People are wondering, well, I'm going to have to go, how do I subsample it? How do I browse it? How do I get what I need? Put the whole doggone thing in the one box, and it's there ready to rock and roll. So <clears throat> uh, this is my last slide. I'll just spend a quick few moments on it. Uh, one rack, one system, one operating system, easy to manage, and it needs to match your workflow, whether it's com compute core intensive, memory intensive, are data, database intensive, okay? <clears throat> All in one rack, air-cooled. This is ZCA phase one. And phase one has some pros and cons. <clears throat> and depending on how you look at it, one of the cons is SGI does not have a workflow to hand you, okay? But that may be a pro, and the Genomics Analysis Center considers that a pro, they get the technology that's working, they put their workflow stack on it, and they've got a competitive advantage. And the simplest thing they would tell us was, if the databases your scientists need will fit in the box, put them in the box, okay? It's gonna be faster. The power goes down, the power comes up, the database is still there. It's on solid state disks, okay? <clears throat> uh, a second one is a company called SAP, has standardized and used this box for an appliance, an SAP HANA appliance. And so they've got small, medium, large, and extra large, and if you want to use SAP HANA, here you go. And it is optimized with cores, memory, and solid state disks to do that work. Okay. So if you've got a workflow in which you have some memory requirement and your data is up to 5x that size, you can put your data in this box and without changing anything should get incredible performance improvements. And if your workflow involves five cards, you're good to go. GPUs, you're good to go. X86, you're good to go. Okay? And that 5x ratio grows to 10x later this year, 20x in two years. So the idea of putting your data in the system and doing in-system computing is now becoming quite available here. Phase 1B and 1, 1A and 1B are the following. You heard me allude to data migration facility, or HSM. That's a stock XFS file system out on those solid state disks, and our DMF folks are working to get their fingers into it so that it can be tier zero of an HSM. So then your scheduler, phase 1B if you would, such as Alter PBS Pro, could be made aware that for these apps in this queue, I need to move this data into the system. And it will do so ahead of time when the I.O. needs aren't high, et cetera, and prepare for the launch of that job. So Gazentas and Gazaltas, saving your science and showing your boss are being enabled is, uh, is the next steps in our phase. So with that, I thank you, and I look forward to further conversations. Any questions? Yes, sir. What type of fabric do you have in there? What, the question is, what type of fabric do you have in there? <clears throat> it is SGI's proprietary Numalink. It is based upon and is the speed of InfiniBand, but it allows all of the memory and all the processors to appear to the operating system as one system. That's SGI's secret sauce. Okay. So when I say there's no networking cables, etc., there are quote unquote Numalink cables that go in a fixed and known configuration. And when they power up, the Numalink ASICs recognize who's on the fabric and you're ready to go. There is nothing to do but power the box up. Very good question. Thank you. Thank you, HPC Council. Thank you, Sydney. Enjoyed it. Bye.